Hello everyone. Right now I'm in a little bit unusual settings as you commonly see me. I'm not in my Tesla, I'm in a Jaguar I-Pace, which is, as you probably know, one of the real world competitors to Tesla. And uh, today I wanna actually look at it from a slightly different perspective. I don't wanna compare it to any other EVs. I wanna look at it just as an EV, just as a car itself what it can actually offer to day-to-day -day, you know use in any normal consumer and what what is my opinion doesn't matter if I'm a Tesla owner or not just the car itself and I will walk you through all the car and just share my honest opinion and I will try to stay unbiased as possible but before we start I just want to do a little shout out uh, thank you very much for Jaguar Tampa for actually letting me play with this very nice very expensive toy and I will promise I will be honest in my review. So let's get on with it. So first, I would like to start talking about the outside exterior of the car, which is, I think, in my opinion, is a very strong point of uh, I-Pace. It looks at the same time futuristic, yet somehow it looks very familiar. It doesn't look like an EV, if you know what I mean. Like when you look at the Tesla, you can certainly notice that it's very different because of no grill situation and all this like you know it's shaped very aerodynamically here you can see some interesting lines like this little scoop that goes uh, through the hood and that actually comes out through the front of the grill but it serves a purpose for aerodynamics but it still has a grill which makes it look like a normal car normal not really normal but you know what i mean uh, it doesn't look an unusual, it doesn't look like an experimental vehicle, it looks just like a vehicle, which I know a lot of people would love. That's exactly, I think, why e-tron, for example, stick into their shape and form, because it just looks like Q5. It's very familiar to the Audi customers, it's just Q5 with just slightly different engine. For all they care, it's the same car. Now, the next obvious uh, thing is to talk about is technology. What does uh, IPAs can offer you from technology wise and don't think about it from a perspective of you know some crazy innovative items like you know you possibly can get in a Tesla there is no such thing it's a still a Jaguar so it's first it's car manufacturer and only later because it's an EV there is some new technologies coming along with it but it's all all of those technologies feels a little bit like a an afterthought that been fitted because it's an EV, not the, the other way around, like in a Tesla, where it's the te technology kind of were built all around the car. It's maybe even the other way around. The car was built around technology, if you know what I mean. But uh, here it feels like you're sitting in a very premium luxury Jaguar first and an EV second. And for a lot of people, I think it's actually a great thing, not the bad thing at all. Um, you do have all your maps and navigations right in front of you. There's three tall screens. They're all a little bit on a smaller side. Um, well, at least the two main ones in the central console, they're a little bit on the smaller side. The one on the left is actually, I think, very similar size with the Model S and X. It's, it's pretty big and wide, like I, I can show you right now. And uh, it basically shows you your navigation. It shows you uh, your speed and uh, it shows you your battery, you know, your pretty much standard go-to uh, screen with all necessities right there, right in front of you. Nothing crazy about it, it, it is not a touch screen. Uh, by the way, Jaguar does have a heads-up display as an option, so this particular one does have it, which is great. A lot of uh, people at Tesla, you know, not people at Tesla, people who buy Tesla, they complain about it. I'm not sure why, I'm not a big fan of heads-up displays, but here it's an option so if you're looking for one that's a good option for you uh, now moving on to a central display the main display that gives you your navigation options where you can search for some locations and stuff your media controls it ha does have like a pandora it has a satellite radio and obviously you can connect the, your phone via bluetooth so pretty standard it, it does sound like a sort of like a luxury option but right now in 2019 it's a standard option everywhere so there's nothing new about it and you have your phone option uh, just to again make some phone call connect to it and all this stuff it does have a voice control which is Again, I, I don't think there is any need to go into uh, details about it. It's just a basic voice control, which you get pretty much in any car, which is great to have it. You don't, I guess you don't notice it until you don't have it. But since right now, most of the cars have it anyway, so I'm not going to talk about it. You know what it means. Basic options, nothing crazy about it. Um, then you have your camera controls. You, you can actually turn on the camera, uh, the bird uh, 
bird view, I guess we call it, 360 view, whatever you want to call it. So Jaguar does have a camera all around for a parking assist or, you know, for actually... I don't believe you can drive around with it, actually, not just I don't believe that you can drive around it. You cannot drive around it, I know that for the fact. The car shut down, so I had to start it off again because it gets very hot here. So you can uh, turn on uh, 300, uh, 360 view to uh, help you park. You cannot use it while you drive. I know it sounds kind of crazy, like why would you have it while you drive? However, I personally, I prefer to uh, have uh, my rear view camera on because it basically kills all the blind spots for me. So I find it as a security measure, I find it very helpful. Uh, you do have your Apple CarPlay for those people who prefer that as their UI system. There you go, you have it right here. You have a little bit of a web browser even, although I'm not sure how useful it is because it is very limited and very awkwardly shaped screen. It's very stretched out on the sides. I don't know how much you can actually browse the web on it. Certainly forget about YouTube or Netflix or anything like this. Don't, don't even ask, obviously it's not an option, but still. And for Android users, uh, there's Android Auto as well. So pretty much any phone, unless you, for some weird reason, still on uh, like a Windows phone or Blackberry, I don't know. You can connect your phone directly here and you can have your phone UI per se in your screen, which is great. 2019, that should be standard. All right, now let's go to where the Jaguar actually shines, which is, in my opinion, interior. And attention to details, obviously, because it's a very high quality luxury vehicle. You know, that's what it's known for, for its luxury. So let's take a look at the interior. I can certainly appreciate Jaguar's attention to details. Uh, everything seems to be well made. Uh, the, the steering wheel is very luxurious. It feels very nice, sturdy. It's on a smaller side which gives you kind of an idea that it's not just a family SUV, it's actually a capable, you know, performance vehicle, which it is, you know, every single EV is capable of a, quite a nice punch, if you know what I mean. So, and this one is no exception. So while we're sitting in the back seat, we are able to control our own climate control. Also, I would like to mention that it has a very cool option here uh, that car actually knows which passenger in the car obviously there is sensors in the seat that require to be there at least for uh, airbags so car knows where any passengers in a car or not in a car and actually adjusting the climate control for that reason so if there is only a driver in a car it's gonna concentrate all the like air AC power and everything on a driver's side which is pretty cool idea. I mean, why not? You already have a sensor, why not utilize it in a very cool, unique way? But even if you want to adjust something manually, if some of your back passengers are a little bit more picky, they can control their own fan speed, their own temperature, everything. Uh, you can see that right now uh, the system recognizes that something getting closer to it and it turned on the lighting. It's, it's pretty cool, it's, it's pretty cool. And in the bottom we have a few charging options. So it's a couple USBs, there you go, here we go, a couple USBs and 12 volt, here we go. So plenty, I think, uh, you know, if each passenger at least have one USB to charge and 12 volt, just in case, I guess, you know, it's absolutely sufficient for any kids or, you know, anybody trying to charge their device. And there's also a little nice pocket uh, below, almost pretty much on the floor. To, I don't know to put some little necessities maybe a charging cable or something but uh, yeah it's pretty nice it has a it has a decent room for the back seat for the legs all right let's talk about the back seating the area where you might put some you know passengers kids whatever I'm 511 I'm sitting in the least comfortable place is in the middle because you know all the cars have this weird little bump in the middle seat uh, so I'm sitting here and all the way to the back seat, I'm touching with whole my body the back seat. I'm 5'11, I'm not touching the roof. My hair is barely, barely, barely touching this uh, stuff on, on, on the roof. Uh, it's hosting uh, lights. Here you go. My head is lighted now. So it pretty much goes all the way to it, but I'm not touching it. I still have about an inch or two. I can, you see, I can put my hand in between those two items my 
head <laughs> and the sliding housing. So still some space, it's fairly comfortable. Uh, obviously I don't get any shoulder support because well it's a middle seat like you don't you don't get to have anything here when you're in the middle seat you have to call shotgun right so and then the side let's see how it measures to the side here I have I want to say at least four or five inches and again I'm 511 so as long as you are below six foot three six foot four I think you're fine you're perfectly fine in the back seat so it's pretty good now, to start the car, it's a really interesting combination what you need to do. In most EVs, pretty much all you have to do is touch the brakes. So I touched the brakes and nothing happened. Because here is the kind of interesting combination of what I've been talking uh, prior about exterior looks. It kind of looks like half EV and half traditional ice vehicle because here I have to hold my uh, foot on the brake but yet at the same time I have to press start button and that's something I have not seen before I'm not sure if I like it I'm not sure if I don't but this is unusual so I, I, I don't know why do I why do I have to hold the brake if I'm clicking the button or vice versa why does it has to be both at the same time I guess I'll never know so buckle up, select the gear, and nothing happens. That's right, because it does not have a creep mode. So it doesn't have a creep mode. So I actually have to touch acceleration in order to go forward. Uh, for many people, I'm pretty sure it's not going to be a deal breaker. They're going to be even like, what the hell is a creep mode? Like, why, why do I care? Why do I need it? And I'm pretty sure a lot of people who does have a creep mode turn it off anyway. So I'm not saying that it's a downside, not at all. I'm just letting you know it doesn't have it. Um, it drives nicely. It's, it gives you nice, luxurious air ride type of comfort where you feel that it's, you're kind of sliding over the ground. You feel the bumps. They're still there, but they're smooth. You know, you don't feel those like very chunky, grainy bumpiness where you feel each tiny little rock underneath. You just feel overall like you're floating in a very nice, luxurious yacht. You're in a boat somewhere in the middle of the ocean with a slight little waves. That's the feeling you get from driving uh, Jaguar I-Pace, which is very nice. I think it's a pretty good feeling. You still have to feel the road, right? So if it's some sort of suspension where you just don't feel anything and you're just like driving in a cloud, well, I, I feel it's pretty bad because you need to be aware of what's going on. You need to feel the car. And the only way to feel the car is through suspension. And I think this is a pretty good combination. Here while I'm driving, I can adjust my suspension while I'm driving to the lower setting. I like it on a low, I like all my cars being slammed to the ground. It gives a better efficiency and in my opinion better looks. But if you decide to go off-roading, which I promised to Jaguar Tampa I will not do in this car, sorry. Uh, but if you decide to do so, you can easily just set your uh, suspension on a higher settings. And this car should be very much capable of doing uh, some pretty good stuff on uh, off-road. Uh, obviously, I wouldn't recommend using the uh, huge wheels that this particular model comes from. I believe it's 21 inch. So it's just not a very smart idea on a low profile tires do anything like this. But then again, if you come into a situation where you're kind of forced to do something like this, hey, why not? Why not? You get certainly going to get you off uh, the snow or some mud. Whatever the issue you might cross from, it will get you out of it. No questions. It has two motors each for the axle, the front and the back. So two independent motors, oh, lots of torque, and that's pretty much all you need to get out of any like sticky situation with the snow, mud, sand. Obviously don't overuse it, you might dig yourself even deeper, but it is a very capable vehicle. I love it, I love it. I will post all the stats so you can see uh, what actually it translates to into actual numbers, not just my impressions. But overall, I think it's a great contender. The price point is not low. This particular vehicle is slightly above $80,000. It's not exactly what you call cheap. But yet again, all EVs currently at a very higher price point simply because of the price of the batteries and all this. It's a very new technology. 
it's it's very questionable for even manufacturers like is this going to be successful are we going to be investing a lot of money into not successful whatsoever vehicle so a lot of car manufacturers taking a very careful approach to this and taking it slow which is we never know i guess only time will show if that's the right approach or not but i think this particular car is a very great step forward it's a first step but it's a great step one more thing i wanted to talk about is a key fob which is, I think, is one spot where um, IPAs could improve. I, I hope they do. So this is a key fob. It's it's large. It's very large. I'm personally, I prefer very minimalistic looks where you know you don't even feel that you have a keys. This is very substantial. And I'll, I I seen some BMW key fobs where you actually have a screen and everything. Since this one doesn't, I'm not sure why it has to be this big. The only functions you have here is lock, unlock, open a front trunk, open a, your normal back trunk, and your emergency lights, or you know your alarm, sounding alarm. And that's it, which is very standard options. But just in comparison, so you understand, maybe you're thinking, well, maybe you have a tiny hands. This is a Tesla key fob. You know, look how thin this is and look how big this is like on the side it it's much thicker even this way but when you put it that way it's like double the size it's it's very large and bulky i'm not sure why it had to be done this way uh, i feel like it could be very um much more elegant or possibly maybe utilize an even app more like uh, we've seen in some uh, cars that you know you can maybe unlock and do a lot of stuff just through the phone app so you don't maybe have to carry this around and although Jaguar does have a uh, um, app that you can control a lot of things with the car you cannot really use it instead of a key so that's certainly a drawback but you know again it's not a deal breaker and it's certainly something that they could easily improve over time hopefully they do I think if it's gonna change just a few minor things here and there it's gonna be extremely capable vehicle already and and those things that I'm talking about they minor like I say the key fob the possibly maybe improving a little bit of range and the one obvious that constantly coming up with any non Tesla vehicle is a charging network not that Tesla has a, such an incredibly exclusive charging network and it's like better a million times than any others. No, there's a lot of other companies that's growing and they're actually pretty big and some of them becoming very comparable in size to Tesla's uh, charging network. But they're not just yet there to basically state that, you know, to give you the confidence of being able to like, oh, tomorrow I'm gonna go drive to Montana and you don't even do any research, you just sit in your car and you just drive. It's not there yet, unfortunately. But then let's be honest, how many people you know actually does this? Not many, so for a lot of people, vast majority of people, this is a great car. And whenever you're gonna be on the market for your next vehicle, if you're not on EV market just yet, I'm encouraging you, do consider this car. It doesn't matter if you hate or love some particular brand, there's plenty of other options and this is a good one. And I encourage you to check it out. It's a great car. I'm sure you will love it. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review. Let me know in the comments if you had any questions, concerns, or you disagree about something. I'm very open to any conversations about it. And let's see. And hopefully I will see you in the next review. See you around.